Okay, so in today's video, because I'm bored, we're gonna have a look here at the top 15 unrestricted free agents that are possibly about to hit the market as per NBC Sports and uh, discuss whether or not the Habs should be interested in any of these cast-offs. But first, before we begin, if you guys are a fan of the Habs or you have actual proof that Bigfoot is real, please consider subscribing to my channel as I upload hockey content daily and would really enjoy having some more of you little grasshoppers tag along for the ride. Now, okay. I know what you're thinking, the Habs, they're still in the playoffs. It's a little early for this talk. Well, hey, look at me, huh? Look, look at me. Does it look like I care, huh? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these yin yangs. And I want you guys to let me know in the little comment section down there, do we got a deal or a no deal on some of these guys? Number one on the list, come on down, Alexander Ovechkin. They go on to say, will he ever make it to the unrestricted free agent market? No way! Which is exactly the way I feel. But right now, he is technically an unrestricted free agent. The guy is what, 35 years old, maybe? That's what in dog years. Whew, he's old. And he just come off a 13-year, $124 million contract that turned out to be a bargain. Can you imagine $124 million of a bargain? Jeez! And I come out of the dollar store with a smile on my face. So, what do you think? Deal or no deal, Alexander Ovechkin? But don't get too excited because I don't see him leaving Washington. And if he does leave Washington, it's probably to go to the KHL. Number two, Dougie. Dougie Hamilton, the best defenseman eligible for unrestricted free agency and also one of the best all-around defensemen in the league. Really? Have you met John Mural? He should have no shortage of suitors. If he makes it to the market, a team like Philly should be all in here, as should Carolina when it comes to re-signing him. Well, what do you guys think of Dougie, huh? Because every time I hear this guy's voice, I think of Boston. Blech. Moving on to number three, and now we're talking. Gabriel Land the Hog. Woohoo, look at that pig fly. Just kidding, Gabriel Landeskog. He's a top line two way player that has been a key hog for what has become the most talented team in the league. Given his status as the Avalanche's captain and the role he plays next to Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen on the top line, re signing this man would have to be a top priority. And they would say he's probably not going to be a bargain anymore. And I'm telling you, I watched quite a few Colorado games. Don't ask why, I just did. I was bored, okay? Jeez, give me a break. But Landeskog, the guy hits. He can fight. He's right into the mix of everything. He's good along the boards. He puts up points. He scores big goals. He's the captain. <sighs> a guy could dream. He'd look pretty good on the left wing, would he not? But I don't see it happening. Number four, we've got Taylor Hall. For the second year in a row now, Hall hits to the unrestricted free agent market. Yeah, I know. I've been calling him Taylor Ha Ha, and his value is going to be fascinating. He had a brutal season in Buffalo on a one-year deal. He got traded to Boston and looks like the MVP player that he was a couple of years ago. Put him in the right situation and he will excel. Whew, so what do you think of Mr. Ha Ha? Should the Habs target Ha Ha? I don't know. I've heard some things about some things about Hall. Anyway, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a Bruin again next year. Number five, we've got Ryan Nugent Hopkins. The guy that sounds like a meal deal at McDonald's. Yeah, can I get my fries upsized with Nugent Hopkins? Re-signing Nugent Hopkins should be a priority for the Oilers. Their forward depth after Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl is already bad. <laughs> You wouldn't say. Of course it is. They cannot afford to lose the one really good player they have beyond them. Yeah, I sort of agree with this. So, what do you think, Habs fans, huh? Aryan H at the Bell Center with a Habs jersey on? <sighs> Let me know. Let me know what you think. Number six, Blake Coleman. They would say, I know this much. His next contract is going to be a heck of a lot larger than the 1.5 million deal he plays on now. Great defensive forward. He can score 20 goals and play with a mean streak. The type of player GMs go crazy over, especially in free agency. What do you think? Blake Coleman, anyone? Number seven, we've got David Krejci. Crikey. Krejci can still play and has been great between Taylor Hall and Craig Smith. The fact he's 36 years young drops him down the list a little. And yeah, I think of David Krejci, I think he spent too much time in Boston. No, I'll pass. I'll pass. Let's move on. Number eight, Jaden Schwartz. 
the Schwarzenegger. When healthy, you can comfortably pencil him in for 20 goals and strong possession numbers over an 82 game season. Very good middle six player. Okay. Next, number nine, Kyle Palmieri. Very underrated player that is a steady 25-30 goal scorer and very good defensively. Not a player that will change your franchise, but a good contributor for a contender. Only concern is his next contract starts when he's 31 years old. Damn it. I'm older than 31. Does that mean I'm old? Next on the list, whoo, shield your eyes. We've got Thomas Tatar, one of the best position drivers in the league with fantastic underlying numbers across the board. Probably a better player than you may realize. Well, why can't he crack the Habs lineup then? Come on, NBC. Okay, fine, fine. Let's give Tatar some credit, okay? He's pretty good. And, uh, stuff. Number 11, we've got Brandon Saad. And if he's that sad, hey, maybe the Habs should sign him. Brandon Saad never became an all-star, but he is a great complimentary piece for a contender, good two-way player that can chip in some offense in a middle six role. I'm listening. Tell me more. Number 12, Zachariah Hyman. <laughs> God, that's the guy they compare to Gallagher, right? Okay, so he kind of gets lost in the shadow of Toronto superstars. Pfft, okay. But Hyman has developed into a solid winger that has been scoring at a 25 goal pace per 82 games for three years now. And he's been playing with Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews banging in garbage, huh? Am I wrong? Probably. Let me know. Next up, Tyson Berry. Buyer beware in big letters. Great offensive numbers, but he was playing in a great environment for that with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and on the best power play in the league. His defensive game though, ho, leaves a lot to be desired. Do not pay for the point total here. Noted, we don't want him anyway. Number 14, Terrence and Philip Deneau. Bitch, you didn't know Philip had a brother named Terrence, did ya? His offensive numbers dropped a little this year, but an outstanding defensive forward that can score 10 to 15 goals. And look at this. Every team in the league can use a player like that on its, and I highlight, bottom six. Deneau is probably listening to this video and he just stopped eating his pizza and he's like, bottom six? But I wanted like 8 million a season and I want to play top line minutes. <sighs> but, hey. I think the Habs are going to re-sign Feldeno. Prove me wrong. I just think him and Marek Bergevin has too good of a relationship for Marek Bergevin to just let walk away with his little box of pizza into another organization. Number 15, we've got Paul Stastny. Remember him? He was the guy that was going to make us pay last series. Stastny is going to be 36 years old next season, but he has not shown any signs of falling off. Not a top line center anymore, but if he is skating as your second or third line center, you're going to have have the start of a strong line. Boom. And there you have it. There is 15 unrestricted free agents that NBC Sports has listed as the top 15. And very quickly, here's how I feel about each one. Alexander Ovechkin, he's staying in Washington or going to the KHL, so no. Dougie Hamilton, hell no. I just don't see it happening. Number three, Gabriel Landeskog. A guy can dream. That's my guy. That's the one I want, but he's going to cost a lot. Story of my life. Number four, Taylor Hall. Yeah, I kind of want him, but that's scary as hell. Number five, the McDonald's order. Huh? Maybe. I don't know. Number six. I'm going to be interested to see what this guy can do on a different team. Blake Coleman I'm talking about, by the way. Number seven, David Krejci. Now, keep him in Boston. I don't want to see him. Number eight, Jaden Schwartz. Uh, maybe. He's a maybe. Number nine, Kyle Palmieri. I don't know. We're kind of stacked with right-handed shots, so I'm going to say no here. Number 10, Thomas Tata. He's not playing right now in the playoffs, and I kind of don't really miss him. Number 11, Brandon is sad. Well, we're going to have to do something about that, aren't we? Number 12, Zach, no. No, just no. Number 13, Tyson Berry. No. Number 14, Phil Deneau. That's Bergevin's boy, and I think he's going to be back. And number 15, Paul Stastny. I don't see it happening. There you have it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, and I'll see you next time.